Hello, welcome to Wethersfield Proctor Library. I'm Glenna Coleman, the Youth Services Librarian, and this is our library bear, Bear. Uh, he is wearing his Western bandana in honor of the second story that we'll read today. But today's theme is variations on the three little pigs. There are so many different stories that have to do with three. Well, our first variation of the three little pigs is actually called the three little wolves and the big bad pig. And this is by Eugene Trivizis and Helen Oxenberry. And I have to say, this is one of my absolute favorite stories. The three little wolves and the big bad pig Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves. But beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother, we will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. I love their confidence. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Now, if you remember the three little pig story, they ended with the house of bricks. So this is interesting because it's beginning with the house of bricks. I wonder where this story is going. Well, let's turn the page and find out. There we go. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he the house didn't fall down. Hmm. Well then, that should be the end of the story, shouldn't it? But it's not. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were very frightened indeed. If you look at the black wolf over here, though he's carrying their china teapot. <laughs> Well, they need a new house, don't they? We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. Well, now that seems like it would be a very sturdy house, doesn't it? Not very appealing, sort of gray, but definitely sturdy. 
No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battledore and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny-chin-chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed, and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. Hmm, well last time he got a sledgehammer, what will he do this time? But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. Oh, but they still have the china teapot. Well, now what? We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros, who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road, as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny-chin-chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. Well, now that didn't work the first two times. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. <gasps> and they have their china teapot. See it? <laughs> they really like their tea. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different. But what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? asked the three little wolves. With Pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. Well, that really is a different building method than they've tried before. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in the refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves 
had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair in our chinny-chin-chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. Well, it seems to me he might have a little more success with this house because it is so fragile. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender, and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed, so they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First they played pig pog, and then piggy in the middle, and when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted, and they all lived happily together ever after. <laughs> well, that story was The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig by Eugene Trivizas and Helen Oxenberry. I have to say this is one of my very favorite stories. I love the variation on the three little pigs. Well, we have one more story, and this one is called The Three Little Javelinas. And this story is by Susan Lowell, and it's illustrated by Jim Harris. The Three Little Javelinas. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy. But their snouts were soft and pink. One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains looked down on the desert. Let's get a picture of the mountains there. Where the cactus forests grew. Soon the little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided and each one went a different way. The first little javelina wandered lazily along. He didn't see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the tumbleweeds. Oh, left the first little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds. Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with them. And in no time at all, he did. His address says number one, Tumbleweed Avenue. Then along came a coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In fact, this was only one of Coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. 
Mmm, a tender, juicy piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. He called out sweetly, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first javelina, who had a lot of hair on his chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in all the hullabaloo, the first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. The second little javelina walked for miles among giant cactus plants called sajueros. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade, and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried-up cactus. She had planned to use these long sticks called sajuero ribs to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second little javelina said, Please may I have some sticks to build a house? How? she said, which means yes in the language of the desert people. My, it does look hot, doesn't it? When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. Pretty soon, Coyote found the Sahuero rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound just like another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. But the little javelinas were suspicious. The second one cried, No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Bah, thought Coyote. I am not going to eat your hair. Then Coyote smiled, showing all his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and all the sahuero ribs came tumbling down. But the two little javelinas escaped into the desert. Still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail. But then he usually came up with another trick. The third little javelina trotted through the beautiful Palo Verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. A hawk floated round and round above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground baking in the hot sun. The third little javelina thought for a moment and said, May I please have a few adobes to build a house? Si, sí, answered the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brickmaker's language. So the third javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in summer and warm in winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. The three little javelinas looked out the window. This time, Coyote pretended to be very old and weak with no teeth and a sore paw. But they were not fooled. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, called back the third little javelina. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. He grinned, thinking of the wild pig dinner to come. Just try it, shouted the third little javelina. 
So Coyote huffed and puffed, but the adobe bricks did not budge. Again, Coyote tried. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The three little javelinas covered their hairy ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. The tip of Coyote's raggedy tail whisked right past their noses. He was climbing upon the tin roof. Next, Coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. The stovepipe, gasped the third little javelina. Quickly, she lighted a fire inside her wood stove. Uh-oh, what a feast it will be, Coyote said to himself. He squeezed into the stovepipe. I think I'll eat them with red hot chili sauce. Whoosh! Sizzle! Oh, what do you think is sizzling? Then the three little javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark. It was not a cackle. It was not a howl. It was not a scream. It was all of those sounds together. Yip, 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 yip! Away ran a puff of smoke shaped like a coyote. The three little javelinas lived happily ever after in their adobe house. And if you ever hear coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, well, you know what he's remembering. The end. That story was The Three Little Javelinas by Susan Lowell and illustrated by Jim Harris. Well, I hope you enjoyed our variations on The Three Little Pig Stories. This was Glenna Coleman at the Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. And our library bear, we all miss you here and hope we can see you soon. But come back for our next story time. Bye.